everybody and welcome to Blue Jays today where your boys always have something to say about the Toronto Blue Jays. I'm your host Nicholas Blaylog. And I'm your host Adam Pedal. And today guys we've got some new Blue Jay plur uh, singular not plural. We got one new Blue Jay on the team. There's been some move that has happened that we're going to break down for y'all. And as well we got to look at a couple injury updates from our minor league system. Yeah. Our number one prospect had a little bit of an injury. And uh, as well like some of the reactions of the Boston series because I know that you haven't got a chance to react on here I got my chance last night so we'll definitely dive into that and get to all of your questions and answers in the chat down below all right let's get into it shall we let's start off with this roster move everybody the rock so excited about this one and that has nothing to do with the person that is coming up we are gonna look at him that is mm -hmm. his name is Jay Jackson it's got more to do with the person that's being sent down Mr. Yeah. Zach Pop, I was starting to get pretty excited about him. I know that you were starting to get relatively excited about him. And now, 15-day IL, in complete transparency, folks, I was unable to watch the game yesterday, so I didn't see exactly what happened to him. But you did, and yeah. you said that it was not ideal. Yeah, it wasn't. I mean, he threw a pitch. And this is after, actually, he had a very bad outing. And, like, you said I'm getting high on him, but, like, his last outing kind of made me... <laughs> <laughs> kind of made me retract some of those thoughts. I'm like, oh, he's been getting beat up a lot, but I don't think this injury has anything to do with it. I think he released a pitch mm. and felt it in his right hamstring because mm -hmm. he has a strain, guys. It was bad. He had to be hobbled off the field with a trainer and a coach like helping him off the field. So, mm. Zach Pop, he's down. Why don't we take a look, actually, at like Zach Pop first on how he was doing because that is a good topic. Sure. I mean... Like, he was starting to become a guy of trustworthy note. Yep. That's because everyone was kind of struggling. But then, you know, look at the numbers now. 6.59 yeah. ERA in uh, 15 games, 13.2 innings pitch. That's a 1.24 whip. I don't know. What are your thoughts, Nick? Like, is this just, is just the waves of the bullpen again? It, it, what we do? it does feel like the waves of the bullpen, man. Now, I'm upset that this guy's down there because I think this guy has a future with us. I think that we saw it in the first probably, you know, seven, eight games there. He was pretty dominant, you know, mm -hmm. and then the last, you know, half year, the last stretch, it's been kind of all over the place, and that's why you have yeah. this inflated ERA here. So that sucks, dude. And and what's even worse about the whole situation is, well, he goes on the IL, it's tough to recover when you're a bullpen guy when you go on the IL. Oh, yeah. You know, because it's yeah. like, you got to ramp up back to speed, and you got to go in the minors, and you got to come back up, and it's just very difficult to get in the rhythm of things. So that is not ideal dude and someone could take your job i mean there's a lot of guys trying to get a job on this bullpen on this bullpen for the toronto blue jays somebody could absolutely take your job now the guy who is immediately taking his job right now is mr j jackson he is 35 years old <laughs> yeah. so definitely a weathered dude uh but not that much in the major leagues no, not that no. much major major league experience when we look at it here guys we got 2015 2019 and then 2021 2022 so he's just kind of like been here then back down then been here again and then back down again yeah so he's all over the place bro what are your thoughts on jay jackson i mean jay jackson i mean my expectation is you're gonna come and you're gonna fill in a spot for us that's yeah. literally it honestly this is what's gonna happen because you have you know zach pop going on the il mm. and remember we have simber on the il he's coming back he's gonna be replacing jay jackson jay jackson is literally brought on this team to be exactly this role if there's injuries in the early part of the season and we need a guy to kind of waste away his contract no offense jay jackson i'm sorry man go out there get it man but like i i don't think the blue jays have a whole lot of high like expectation for jay jackson and neither do i mm -hmm. so he's gonna be the filler guy and then if he has to we have to like burn all of his uh um options We'll burn all of his options. Yeah. yeah, we don't really care. No, I completely agree, dude. And if there is any light at the end of this tunnel, if there's any light at the end of this injury tunnel, it means that Nate Pearson's not going anywhere. Mm -mm. Nate Pearson's not going anywhere. And good. Right? Yeah, exactly. Good. That is a good thing because we were talking about this for a while that we were going to have to deal with this problem of, well, when Simber comes back, where's Nate Pearson going to go? Because... He's been good so far. Yeah. He's pitched 4.1 innings. He hasn't let up a single run. And I, I'm, I'm saying, well, I don't want to send him anywhere. But at the same point, like, then you have to get into the conversation of DFAing Anthony Bass. And is it time to do that? That's been a whole conversation in Blue Jays Nation. But basically, because we have somebody going on the IL again, mm -hmm. Nate Pearson, his job is safe for now. Yeah, we bought a little bit more time. And like, hey, there could be some more injuries. Who knows? But you basically bought yourself another 15 days, right? Yes. With, yes. with Zach Pop. And I'm actually glad because I do want Simber, that transition to come back to be very smooth because I did like what Simber was doing. Mm -hmm. And like you're saying, 
I love what Napier's doing. Out of that entire series against the Boston Red Sox, our bullpen, not good. Mm -hmm. Our starting pitching, not good. Like, you saw in the bullpen in particular, two L's being assigned to Swanson and Romano. Yep. So, literally, the two guys we trust the most both got L's in this series, and obviously our starting pitchers really, really blew it. Yeah. Um, but this guy was the one bright spot. He came out a few times, pitched multiple innings, and he gave up nothing. Yeah. So I'm loving this. I'm loving Nate Pearson. I think he's got to stay. He's yeah. got to stay, man. And, and bro, like, Nate Pearson's stuff. Nate Pearson's oh, yeah. stuff it, this season is where it's supposed to be. When he was a prospect, he was coming up, everyone talked about how his fastball is electric. It just jumps on a hitter. I'm seeing that right now when he's in the bullpen. He 100%. looks like he is at the level of competition that he needs to be at. I don't want to send him down. I no. think that he has been – he's proven enough at this point that to continue – to go and I also think that now that he's got an additional 15 days now that he's got an additional 15 days if in 15 days he's still kicking ass and Anthony Bass is still really sucking now we're at mid to late May right and this is what you we were talking about you can start to think about having that conversation now mm -hmm. Nate Pearson's at like 10 innings pitched and still doing dominant, yeah. I don't know if I want to get rid of him at that point. Yeah, I think that's it's one of those conversations where it's a bridge we're going to have to cross when we get there because the whole the whole environment might change just like we totally, saw. Totally, totally. Hey, Jay Jackson might be dominant. Yeah, Actually, who knows? I, I'm not even lying. If Jay Jackson comes out here, pitches four innings, and is puts up zero earned runs with zero hits and, like, 10 strikeouts, he will still get sent down. Probably. He will still get sent down, probably. guys. Let's be honest. Yeah, <laughs> like, probably will, man. Probably will. But Nate Pearson, we like what we're seeing out of him so far, and I'm happy that in this entire thing, to turn a negative to a positive, he gets a little bit more of an opportunity. And mm. goddamn, we need it, folks. Yeah. I titled this video, Blue Jays Bullpen in Trouble? Question mark Because obviously, we're sending, Jay, uh, we're sending Zach Pop down. Mm -hmm. We're bringing up a guy, Jay Jackson, who frankly does really not have that much major league experience. And as you said, mm -hmm. our best two bullpen guys in this past week, they both took L's. Yes, they did. So even they are exploitable at this point. What are our thoughts right now on this Blue Jays bullpen? Dude, it's rocky as hell. Uh, I wish I had the stat. It's so hard to find on Fangraphs. So anyone in the chat wants to go find the Fangraphs reliever stat, bring it up to us. But we've got to be in the, still in the, in the bottom 10. Oh, a thousand percent. Be because I know that our pitching for, uh, for a fact is, in fact, in the bottom six, we're 16th in the MLB in ERA. That's total. That's starters. Mm -hmm. That's relievers. And I know that our starters are better than our relievers, yeah. I think, at this point. Even I mean, though they the, had a even had horrible week. Horrible week, week, this horrible week, week. Too, yeah. And so did our bullpen guys, right? They just were really bad. So it's not looking good. What I what needs to happen is we've got to just ride the waves, man. Yeah. we got to ride the waves until we can find some. We can settle. The dust got to settle, man, because I know. Maybe I'm biased, obviously. Mm. But maybe I am biased. But I think that this Blue Jays team is going to be a good pitching staff. Like, good enough. Like, top 12. At least what we have. Like, sure. that, coming into the season, I'm like, okay, all around. Bullpen. Starting pitching. Top 12 team. And we're not that right now, but we can be. So, yes. let's, let's find our way, man. I completely agree, dude. This squad is too talented to be putting up this performance for the entire season. I don't expect this to continue. This is a bad, bad week. But yeah. it is something that you're going to need to rectify because, frankly... Giving up four straight L's to a division rival, that's unacceptable. Yeah. That is unacceptable. And frankly, unacceptable is the word that Kevin Gosman used yes. when he was talking about his start yesterday. And I love that he came out and he said this. He took accountability. He knows that he is the veteran leader on this pitching rotation. He's yes. that guy. Even though we look at Alec Manoa as like the future of this team, Alec Manoa probably looks up to Kevin Gosman. Oh, 100%. 100%. So I love the fact that Kevin Gosman is coming out and owning it and saying, hey man, I screwed up. They were really good, and I just wasn't the best, and I need to be better moving forward. Absolutely. And one thing I really like that he he talks about in this article, when you give it just a brief little uh, skim through, uh, he was saying here the key to their success was to put the ball in play, extending at bats, doing a good job of laying off good pitches, and forcing me to get in the strike zone. And that's exactly what I saw mm. Kevin Gosman in his start. He was throwing that four-seamer, which was some, like This was the crazy thing. He was throwing a lot of that four-seamer, it seemed like, in good hitters' counts. Of course, you want to throw the good four-seamer. Sure. Uh, because here's the thing. They were just laying off of that splitter, which typically falls out of the zone. They were laying off that, and that's what 
Kevin Gosman relies on. It's a lot of swing and miss, a lot of whiff in that splitter, and he wasn't getting it from these good Boston Red Sox hitters. So what do you have to do? Come over the heart of play with the fastball, and guess what? They're ready for it, and they they attacked him for eight runs. That is a lot of runs, man, and that's not something that you see every day from Kevin Gosman. Granted, mm -hmm. this week was not an everyday thing, no. and I think. If we look at the entirety of the team, you could point to pretty much everything and you could say this needs to improve because, again, four yes. losses to Boston, just simply unacceptable, guys. Yeah, I'm happy that you pulled uh, yeah. this up. This I is the next thing that we it. can transition to here, guys. You look at the standings. This is not where I was, I was thinking crazy, that we bro. would be at this point. You, you know what? If you told me, okay, you're going to start the season 18 and 14. You want to roll again? I'd be like, no, no, no. Let's keep it. I'd be like, yeah. I'll take it. Yeah, I'll yeah, take it. Yeah, yeah. I'll take 18 to 14. Yeah. But fourth in the division, like that's like a <laughs> secret hidden number at the end. But you're actually going to be fourth. Literally. You know? Like, I'd be like, what the hell is going on with this yeah. division? Fourth and like, one game out of fifth. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> you know? It's like, how is that even possible? We're eight <laughs> games back from first? Yeah. Already? That's crazy. I made a uh, – in my reaction, I also cut a clip from this for this morning. Just, like, talking about how – much respect we got to put on these AL, this AL East because yeah we beat the Rays and yeah we beat Yankees but they could totally beat us uh -huh. the Rays are the best team in this division we got spanked by the Red Sox who were last like a week ago yes and, and now here they are past us in third place and we haven't faced the Orioles yet but I already know that series they're gonna is going to be, be a crazy. problem too they man. are they're going to be a problem too like again Red Sox offense is good but Orioles could arguably better you know uh -huh. so it's like we uh -huh. are going to have to deal with these teams at some point or another and we just need to keep clawing out W's whenever we can. You said ride the waves a little bit earlier when we're talking about yeah. this team. Clearly, we're in a little bit of a valley right Whoa. now. We're in a little bit of a valley. That's why when we're in our peaks, like we were last week, yeah, yeah, yeah. we got to capitalize we on do. every single opportunity, folks, because these guys, they're doing it. Baltimore's yeah. doing it. Yeah. Tampa Bay, for crying out loud, is doing it. And, and I wanted to pull up here because you you talk about capitalizing on those uh, on those on those uh, teams that are struggling, yeah. guys. It's not I, easy. I, it's not going to get easy from here on out. We're facing the NL. I don't know if they're NL leaders anymore because they just got swept by the Rays. That's how crazy this is. <laughs> like, see, even Pirates are going through a bit of a wave, and they're one of the best teams. They're the first team to hit twenty in the NL. But you got the Pirates, who was a good team, better on paper than us in all categories in OPS and ERA. Yeah. The Phillies. We're starting to just be Phillies. I mean, yep. they're still a good team. Uh, the Braves, the Yankees, the Orioles, the Rays again, the Twins who are leading their division, the Brewers who are leading their division. And it doesn't stop here, folks. The Mets, the Astros, oh the God. Twins again, oh my Orioles, God. and then the Rangers. Oh my God. There is not a single break. And even the Marlins are doing well. Wow. Even the Marlins. You could argue there's not a break until we get back home on June 23rd where we can have a calm series against the A's, but then Giants are decent. Red Sox have spanked us. Like, this beginning schedule is tough. So this is the this is going to be a really rocky wave My moving God. forward. Yeah. For the next month and a half, for the next month and a half, it is going to be freaking difficult. It's going to be very hard. My very goodness hard. gracious, dude. There are no easy Ws there. There are no. There are no easy Ws there. And I'll tell nope. you right now, if the Blue Jays' bullpen and starting pitching plays like they did in the last four games, Ooh. it's going to be tough. It's it's you're done. not going to want to turn on your TV it's in the next be month and a half, guys, no. because those teams will capitalize on bad pitching all the time. Yeah. Houston will do it. All, like Literally, we, we're going to need to be better. Here's the thing. Exactly. We're going to need to get better. We're going to need to learn from mm -hmm. this series. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you, I think these are all capable MLB players, lots of veterans, lots of skilled young guys on this Blue Jays team. Yeah. They're going to learn what it's like to face an offense that is resilient. Yes. You know what I mean? Like they did not give up. They didn't give in. They didn't cheat to anything. They swung at you, the, your mistakes and they capitalized. Yeah. So now you got to fight. The offense was trying to fight, but the pitching staff's got to fight back. And I think that we can do that. And it's got to start today against these pirates because they're good too. They score yes. a lot of runs. Yeah. They score a lot of runs. And and they're one of the biggest surprises of this season, yes. guys. They have 20 W's right now, I believe, unless that's changed. Um, They are good. And they're better than us in every single statistical category, yeah. like Adam is saying. Yeah. On paper right now, you would give them two W's out of three, I at would. least. I would, 100%. You know, especially with the way that we're playing. Yeah. But considering the stretch that we have coming up... 
you we gotta, gotta need like, it. You, need you know, it, you it's, know? it's just like, we didn't expect you to be this good. Yeah. So we kind of have to be, make you be bad. Yeah. You see, know? In that stretch, we had, we, there were breaks until they decided to be good. Literally, literally. There, like, yeah. did I expect Pittsburgh to be this good? No. No. Did I expect, uh, uh, um, the twins or the Milwaukee Brewers yeah. to be as good as no. they are? No. no. Did I expect the Orioles no. to have over no. 20 W's no. by this point? I expected them to be decent, but, but not that good. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. So like they're all, literally all of the teams that walking into this season, we were like, well, you know, we're probably better than them. We're not right now. We're, right we're now, we're not. We're literally not. Or if anything, we're neck and neck right yeah. now. Like we, we got to stay competitive, but we got it. We've got to get to work against these pirates and, you know, I think that's a good transition. Let's take a look at what is going on today against the Pirates. Let's take a look at our lineup to start off uh, this little breakdown. Uh, we got Chris Bassett. He obviously, among with other starting pitchers, got <laughs> messed up. He got pretty messed up yeah. against, uh, it was the Mariners. Uh, he got pretty messed up pretty bad. And uh, we'll see if he bounces back. This is a whole new team, a whole new city, a whole new series. Yeah. Uh, but then you got George Springer going to be leading us off. Just going to flip us over here, folks. George Springer leading us off. I have a video coming out tomorrow. I think it was time. Last week, people were a little bit too sensitive on the mm. topic on talking whether George Springer is good or bad this season. Mm. I think everyone's on the boat that he is not doing well. Yeah. And I'll be talking about that a little bit more in breakdown. But your thoughts on George Springer so far? Tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock, mm -hmm. guys. Stay tuned. Video coming out. Thoughts on George Springer is... You can't be batting like close to 200 in the leadoff spot. That's it. You can't. That's that's just. I mean, like that's nothing against George Springer. I would say that to, to anyone. Yeah. I would literally yeah. say that to anyone. So that's that's just yeah. the way that it is. So I hope that you get better. And granted, I I do I see some comments saying like, oh, I like the lineup today, but George Springer leading off. And I think here's the thing: you gotta give him I still more time. You're still gonna You're still ride him more time. You're still gonna ride it mm -hmm. because again, that's that's supposed to be your guy. He's earned right? it. That's supposed to be your guy. Yeah. I think that. If this is where he is in 25 days at the end of May, yeah. maybe we can start having those conversations. That's two months into the season. Yeah. And if Bo is still batting, you know, fucking ungodly numbers. Yeah, yeah. yeah there right? might be time. It's, Especially if we're, like, still fourth in the AL East. If we got to make – because the, the switch would happen if yes. we're – struck. Like, right now we're, we're, we're playing. Yeah. We're playing. We're yeah, playing. we got swept, but we're, we're – you know, we're competing. Excuse me. Um, but, yeah, I think that's a conversation in about a month from mm -hmm, now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and then Bo Bichette. Just my God, phenomenal! Like amazing, amazing. I love both. Everyone, most people struggled in that series, but Boba Shett and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. <laughs> like, and speaking of Vladimir Guerrero Jr., he's next. He had two home runs in that series. Nice, absolutely mammoth of uh, both of them. Actually, love it. Uh, Matt Chapman, obviously, still doing well. He's there. Actually, cooled off a little bit in that series, but I'm not that worried. Kirky, he's up in the five spot. Mm -hmm. uh, DHing, mm -hmm. gotta love to see it. Wit there, following him, another hot Blue Jay. And then Dalton Varsho, back down in the seventh spot. This is the right decision. This is it. This I is like the it. right decision, man. Like, again, I understand that you want your lefty-righty split, but at the end of the day, you know, is he still batting below the Mendoza line? I, I Actually, he started picking it up, but here's the thing. You need to pick it up a lot more because yeah. there's other guys doing better than again, you. Yes, there are other guys doing better than you. Okay, so not not quite there, but again, he did actually, well, He had a really good series. He now, must I, have. He must have had I, a good series. I did notice he had the homer. And he had some good, like, two-hit performances. Yeah. Let's take a look at what he did in this series. Just a little quick little side side story here, folks. Dalton Varsho, yeah, I batted 400 in that okay. series. Okay. Good for Shut you. Up. Hopefully this is the beginning of something. Yes. Hopefully this is the beginning of something. I I'm, agree. I'm, I do agree. I still like him, though, where he is right now. Yeah. But hopefully this is the beginning of something. And if you keep this up, obviously you move up. Hey, and you know what? Um, I did notice this. They did do a little breakdown on Dalton Varsho's swing. So before, he was doing the yes, toe tap. Yes, But now what he's doing is getting the hip engaged a bit more. Yeah. So he's creating a bit more power. Getting a bit of a leg kick in there, too. Yeah. Could be helping with his timing a lot and squaring up the fastballs. But he started doing it. And look what's happening. It's just little tweaks like that. Can really change the picture. I remember Ross Stripling in 2021. Mm. I remember I told you this when he changed. It was a very simple like wind up thing. Mm -hmm. Just from it was, instead of going from the full wind up, he just did a little side step. Yeah. And then he and then he pitched for like a 221 in two months. Sure. And it's it, simple little things. Yeah. Can change. You say Kikuchi with this, where his hands are placed. Yeah. Just mechanically. Great. Absolutely. So hopefully that adjustment there by Dalton Varsho is going to make a difference, and he can continue to stay hot, guys. Then you got Danny Jansen, and then you got Santiago Espinal rounding. That's mm -hmm. a pretty solid lineup, but uh, obviously some question marks there at leadoff with George Springer. Let yeah. us know your thoughts in the comments down below about that. Is this your perfect lineup, or what would you change 
around. And then like obviously it. on the Pittsburgh side of things, I mean, wow, I kind of, I actually, I actually like, like their, them a lot. their graphics here. Yeah. You know, it's like an old retro baseball card. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyways, folks. Uh, yeah, no, uh, we, we were a fan of uh, graphics here. For real. Uh, G1 Bay leads off. Yeah. Brian Reynolds, two. Carlos Santana, three. Jack Sawinski, four. Miguel Andujar, five. Rodolfo Castro, six. Tusipita Marcano, seven. Mark Mathias, nine. And Austin Hedges, or uh, Austin Hedges is nine, excuse me. Matthias is eight. And uh, Rich Hill's on the butt. But I'll tell you right now, guys, there's very few uh, batters that I even recognize here. Right, literally. Like, right. they're, like, most of, a lot of the guys in the bottom there, I have ne- I've never heard of Mark Matthias before in my no, life. No. Uh, Tusipita, you know who Tusipita Marcano I is? I can't say I do. Can't say I can't that say you do, I buddy. Do. You know, so it's like a lot of these guys uh, are like, who, what, where did you come from? Yeah. But they are getting it done right now. They are yeah. getting it done right now. So credit where credit is due. This is going to be, yeah. Yeah. I, look I, at I, I don't really right know now. this guy either. See, this guy did get off to the get off to a hot start. Now he's kind of cooled off a lot, mm. actually. His OPS is down to 79. I was looking him up to hope that, like, maybe this guy look up for him. We all know Brian Reynolds. Sure. We all know Carlos Santana. Yeah. But J- Jack Suwinski, that's another guy that I want to look up. Because if we're going to face him, I want to know who we're up against. And this guy's Whoa. He got off. He's off a lot to a lot of power, a lot of wow. pop, a lot of on base too. Taking yeah. his walks and hitting his home runs. Yeah. So again, these are you know they're you know they're kind of no names, but they're turning into somebody's right now. Yeah. They're turning into somebody's right Especially now. Especially with their record. Yes. Right. Exactly. That is literally what's going on, guys. So it's going to be a tough one, folks. Adam, give me your prediction for this series. Oh God, guys! If I'm actually gonna get like a realistic prediction, I think we we only take one. I agree with and you, and I think it's gonna be with you say tomorrow. Agreed. <laughs> I I do I agree I, with you on that one. I can't. I mean, like I think we're still kind of shell shocked. We're we're jet lagged. I mean, we're only went to Pittsburgh. We went from literally Boston to Pittsburgh, not that far. Mm-hmm. But you know, we've been moving. We just got beat up. I think we're going to drop the today. We're going to pick up tomorrow with you, say, and then Burrios. It's a random roll to die, but I think the home field advantage is going to go to the Pirates. Yep, 100%, you know? dude. We got to make it to Monday, which is an oh. off day, and we got to chill. We got to catch our breath, Yeah, folks. we do. This is where we're going to cut it off for the rewatchability standpoint. So if you're watching right now, stay tuned. Stick with us. We're going to get to the whole Q&A section. We're going to play some games. It's going to be awesome. But if you're rewatching this, and comment down below. How did tonight's game go? What did you think about the roster move and all of that and more, guys? Let us know in the comments. Guys, thank you. Thank you so much for watching. And go, go Chase, Chase go! go.